how do I know it is just anxiety? You know, how do I know the difference and what should I do? Well, the very first thing you should do always, without exception, go see your doctor. That's, that's really important. I don't want to make a joke out of it because it is really important. There are so many physical reasons why you could have those particular sensations you are having. So, and it, there's really no point if you do not go to the doctor, part of your mind will always, no matter how much you dare and, and go to therapy, part of your brain will always be like, but what if it's really a tumor? But mm -hmm. you know, what if it's really that? Please go to the doctor. It's really important for your health and also for your own, just to be calm about it and to know, okay, this is really only anxiety. And do all the tests you need to do. If you really need to go, go and have a second opinion, but, that, but then rest assured, okay, this is anxiety. And then I would also point out that many people do not know how physical anxiety really is. I have so many clients that are like, but I have tinnitus. I really need to go to the doctor. Oh, yeah, that could be from anxiety, right? So, okay, this is anxiety, but that can never be anxiety, right? That can never, oh yes, it really can be anxiety. So educate yourself on all the physical manifestations of anxiety. And when you have them checked up by your doctor, rest assured, it is only anxiety. And know that these these stress hormones, they are, for, they are in your body for such a long period of time. They need time to leave your system and for your body, everything to get back into balance. It's not like, okay, I've been fighting with anxiety for two years and now I'm two weeks into therapy and ah, well, my body feel, still is upset. I still have these sensations. Yes, of course you will have them. And that's why it's really, really important to give yourself time and to take good care of your physical body with nutrition, with exercise. And by the way, while we're at this, <laughs> all of my clients, when they tell them, are you exercising? Are you sleeping well? Are you meditating? Mm, yeah, kind of. But you know, that's woo-woo stuff. Like it's not so important. It is fucking important. It is really, really important for you to take good care of your body, especially if you are struggling with physical sensations because it's this sensitization that causes sensations and even if you dare through them but you keep sensitizing your nervous system with let's say lots of alcohol and not sleeping properly not eating properly not exercising consuming the news and facebook and instagram and all of this stuff you're going to be here and then you can dare through as long as you want right you have to do these two things dare through and also take care of your body yeah. And, you know, anxiety loves the past and loves the future. So if it's a what if, it's somewhere in the future, either three seconds to 27 years into the future. And we get stuck with physical sensations because we say like, it feels like, and so there's a difference between, I feel like I'm about to have a heart attack and I feel my heart racing right now, because that's a real feeling. This is you taking a feeling and predicting the future. And what happens is we create this worst case scenario in our head because there could be a million shades of gray, but we find, we take that sensation, we hook it into whatever we don't want to happen the most. And then oh, there's the thought I don't like, I don't want to have a heart attack. Well, better control this feeling I'm just having right now to make sure that bad thing doesn't happen. So we get stuck with this idea of, but what if I do? But what if I do pass out? But what if I do go crazy? Remember, we are not this. You're doing something about a thought you don't like. Just because you're thinking about dying and you're feeling afraid about that thought doesn't mean you're dying right now. And that's where the disconnect is. That's where you use dare. It's this idea of like, let's see. Let's see what my body does. I can't think away, right? This, the future. That's where we get stuck. We, we like a sure thing. We don't like uncertainty. We don't like vulnerability. It, to me, it always comes down to control and vulnerability. What if something happens? What if this time this is actually something bad? See, like it's even if it's two seconds into the future, keep yourself right here. The very moment. Is there actual danger right now? Or do you just feel uncomfortable and you're thinking about danger? I think people think that, well, I, I have to be on the lookout for it because just in case it does become danger in two seconds, I'll be ready for it. You know, and I think it feels better. People feel like I'll be on high alert. So go right ahead and do that. 
but then don't expect to feel calm if you're keeping yourself in high alert because you feel like you're gonna die any second, every single day, you know, for your entire life. It's letting go of the fight. It's the fight of, it's if danger happens right now, I will respond to that danger. And when it comes to the physical stuff, actually when it comes to anything, that's one of the other biggest things that we see posted everywhere, reassurance. Anybody ever, does anybody ever have? And it creates a little tension out there in Facebook land because it feels nice to have reassurance, right? It does, it feels good temporarily because it's almost like, you know, you have a shake in a bottle of soda and it lets a little bit of the air out. Well, here's something I don't like. It's making me worried. Anybody ever have, anybody ever have this weird feeling here? I promise you a hundred percent of the time, somebody in the world's going to say, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 I have that. Not once have I ever seen anybody say, no, that's weird, right? Oh, no, no. And then five minutes later, well, anybody ever have a feeling on, on this side of your head, right? Oh, oh, what about this? Well, what about a headache that kind of feels like this? What about a headache that, kind of, right? We have seen it all. And when we're searching for reassurance, you are not like searching for medical opinions. Meanwhile, it's the same people who have been to 27 doctors. Like, no, oh, I don't even know if I believe them. So you trust, you. there has to be some place where you have the confidence to just trust that my body is safe right now. Seeking reassurance is something that like you want to grow self-assurance, not reassurance, or you will always be reliant on somebody else to tell you it's okay. Everything's okay. And when you're trying to reassure yourself, you're basically saying, see, everything's fine. Now shut up, shut up and go away and be quiet and come down and get rid of it. So no more, like if you so stuck in this loop of reassurance, especially from peers and from other people and all different anxiety forms, anybody ever have this? Anybody ever have that? Assume the answer is yes, and it is okay. It is the fight of what you're experiencing, not what you're experiencing. Yeah, right. I think it's perfectly okay to go and like post once okay this is weird i don't know this sensation everybody ever experienced that oh yeah me too but then leave it be <laughs> leave right. it be if you have checked out leave it be because if you and like anxiety likes to to come up with new sensations and if you go into facebook or any forum or somewhere and you keep seeking this reassurance you fall into the safety behavior and safety behavior is really not different from avoidance behavior and we know from the beginning of this video that experiential avoidance is the opposite of allowance right so this is not working yeah it's like a two-tiered sort of thing because our bodies do weird things all day long a little twinge a little like you know you ever get those eyebrow twitches where your, your eyebrow just starts to go or a funny feeling in your stomach or those are just normal things all normal people experience so our bodies do things all day long with i have a real light this time but our alarm right when we're scared it's kind of like What's that? So now something that might just like, oh, I, I barely even noticed it. Now, when we're in a hypersensitive state, right? We're hypervigilant, our alarm's like, oh, what's that? So now that headache is seeing like this and we have to tend to it. And now I'm noticing everything. It's because your light bulb's brighter, not necessarily because you're feeling more things. You're just noticing more things. Oh my gosh, where do those thoughts come from? Those are awful. Yeah, the same old, plain old, regular, normal thoughts that everybody else has. Everybody has those weird, shitty thoughts. It's the light bulb that makes you see the ones in the dark corner. So that kind of paired up with the fact that your alarm is supposed to make you feel uncomfortable, right? Your pupils dilate. So, oh, everything looks weird. It's supposed to. But when you're focused on real danger, you're not noticing what your body's doing. You're so all of that natural response is geared towards fighting danger. This is where we get stuck. There's nothing actually to focus on. So we focus on our response to danger and we're fighting our own response to danger. I'm like, my heart is racing. Yeah, supposed to race when you're running from a bear. Oh, I, I can't catch my breath. Yeah, that works great for lions. But when it's just fear, when it's just sort of misfired, then we turn inward and we start fighting this feeling and seeking reassurance. And I feel this, I feel that. Remember, it's notice how you feel. 
Our problem is the fight of how we feel. And as you start allowing, right, this light, like when you stop fighting, it's like, look at that, look at that, look at that, go right ahead and look at it. And eventually it starts, it starts to fade, right, on its own. It is a self-regulating system. It's, it has an on button, but there's no off button. And that's the part, like most people, if you're really stuck, it's because you're a really good fighter. You're really good at doing things. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. I will meditate the shit out of this. I will drink 47 glasses of water a day. I will listen to Barry's angelic Irish voice for hours. I will just meditate. <laughs> oh my gosh, just go away, right? It's that. I get the doers, the go-getters, the fighters. Anxiety lives in the fight. It is teaching you weirdly how to be passive, how to let your body settle down, right? Dust settles itself down, right? The pond settles itself down. It's that response of your alarm is up because you keep fighting. You have to stop fighting and give space for your alarm to wind itself back down. And that's where you practice being still, accepting and allowing, even going towards it. And then it's, it's you, we're so busy trying to calm down, your body calms itself down. So that's know, a little bit tangent, but that's, I wanted to make sure I got that in there. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. I think you guys have really answered these, these really well and we could do a whole other session on FAQs.